My last video was an April Fool's joke and I wasn't planning on making an explanation video on it. I kind of hate having to explain my own jokes, but there were several people that actually agreed with me and actually thought my points were really good. Now this might be a meta April Fool's joke where really they're trolling me back, but it really pains me to think that even a small percentage of people were convinced by my video that TypeScript is bad and generally think that because TypeScript's actually pretty good. So I thought it'd be educational to go through the points that I made in my last video about why I'm done using TypeScript and basically just tell you why it is complete crap and my points are really not that valid because I have heard these arguments from people before. So hopefully this will give you a better perspective on things. So we're gonna just jump straight into things. And the first thing is the syntax. It is just super ugly and cluttered and hard to read. If we compare a side-by-side -side with JavaScript and TypeScript, we'll see that the TypeScript version, take a good look at that, right? We're gonna have to stare at that for a good five seconds before we can even figure out what it does just because how much clutter there is in the type annotation there. So my first point is TypeScript is less readable because of the type annotations that you have to add. And this is just not true. The syntax of the programming language you're using has a very small effect on the readability of your code. The variable names you pick, the way you say format your code, and I would say probably the most important is how you actually choose to write your code will have a larger impact on the readability of that code. And what I mean by that is, let's say we want to sum a list of numbers in a list. To write the code to do that, I could do it in several different ways. I could write a recursive function, I could do the reduce function, or I might just do a for loop. So decisions like that, and how you say structure your code, whether you should co-locate something, whether you should abstract something into a function, all these little things on how your code is actually going to be written is far more important and affects the readability far more than whether you have some type assertions or type annotations in there. And I think a lot of times people will say code is more readable when it is in a familiar syntax or style that they're used to. So a team of JavaScript developers may find TypeScript very unreadable because they're not used to type annotations and they find that clutters their JavaScript code. But that's also like me saying, I find French less readable than English. Like yesterday, I saw the word bonjour written in a book and it took me a whole five seconds to figure out what that even meant. Whereas if it was written in English, a more readable language, then I'd instantly know what it meant. And lastly, I found that as I've gotten better at TypeScript that I've actually enjoyed having the type annotations there. Knowing what the type of a variable or a function returns can be super helpful and I found it is more readable or has made my code more readable. For example, I bet you didn't even notice in the TypeScript code that I showed earlier that there is a bug in it. We were too caught up in the clutter of the code to not even realize that that should not be a minus sign, it should be a plus sign. Now this is actually a legit point. TypeScript does not stop you from writing bugs. It just catches type errors. So you can still write logical errors, but that doesn't mean that TypeScript is bad because it still has logical errors. JavaScript has logical errors too. It just helps you catch one type of error. To that I say, JavaScript is type safe too. Take a look at this. See my code here? I'm gonna be alerted that I am passing in an incorrect argument here to my add function. We just need to give VS Code a second, you know, to load things. Oh, oops, sorry guys. I just forgot to add my JS doc annotation. Let me do that real quick. And bam, there you go. We have type safe JavaScript code. This one's a funny one for me because it's not really a point against TypeScript or about TypeScript at all. Uh, it was more of kind of just a red herring and I used it as an excuse to be able to make fun of people that use prop types and JS docs. And I actually do think if you're gonna put in the actual work to annotate your code, that you might as well just use TypeScript because it's more powerful. So yeah, I would actually use JavaScript without annotations or I would just use TypeScript. All right, now we're on to numerotress and that is the error messages in TypeScript. Take a good long look at this guy, read them twice if you need to. I'm guessing you have no idea what it means and quite frankly, rightfully so because it is written in a foreign language. Okay, so this one's kind of real point, but it's also kind of not a real point. 
So I was mainly going for kind of a shock factor is, oh, whoa, that's kind of a huge error message. And so to do that, I just cherry picked a very large TypeScript message. And there are a ton of very readable short TypeScript error messages. And I would say the TypeScript team that is developing the language is doing a very good job of just improving the readability of these things. But either way, it is true. Sometimes you are gonna see an error message like that. Like that is not a fake message, that is a real one. Uh, but the thing is, once you actually get better at TypeScript and have been dealing with these messages for a little bit, they're actually very readable and they make more sense. And you can very quickly pick out what they mean and do the fix. With that said, you are gonna run across some error messages sometimes where you're just looking at it and you're like, um, what the heck do I do with this? You just have no idea what the cause is. And when that happens, you kinda of have two choices. Either one, you can go down the you know rabbit hole of trying to figure out what the problem is and the root cause. And sometimes I think that's a good option and it's usually what I try to do first because it helps you long-term to understand the message later on. Or you can just go with the short solution, which I certainly do sometimes, which is to just mark it as any. And then you lose the type safety, so you don't know what type it is, um, but it allows you to get rid of the error message and you're on with your way. Lastly, we all know taxes are terrible. And TypeScript is a tax on your time. So taxes are bad. TypeScript is a tax. Therefore, TypeScript is bad. I found this only to be true when I was first learning TypeScript. After that, once I kind of became proficient at it, I actually found that TypeScript helped me save time, especially for large projects. But even for small projects, I prefer to use it just because it shortens the feedback loop while I'm actually coding. If I make a type error, it is going to immediately alert me that there's something wrong, and I can fix it right there in my editor without going back and forth either to my browser or running the code, which can save time and you just get faster iterations. On top of that, I just have to think about one less thing. If I can let the TypeScript compiler think about type errors and catching them, that gives me more time to think about the logical errors that could be introduced into the code and preventing those. So there you go, those are my actual thoughts on TypeScript. And just to be crystal clear, I will be continuing to use TypeScript and I will still be recommending it to everyone and I recommend you give it a try.